In this question, we are told that Bob runs a car wash business. He starts saving for new equipment by investing. The first question says, what effective rate will give him the same return? So remember that when they say effective, they are talking about the yearly interest rate. Because in this one, they said that it's 7.5% per year, but then they say compounded quarterly. So they want to know what is the effective, okay? So remember, that's when you use this formula over here. 1 plus E effective. So let me just write that a little bit better. Equals to 1 plus. Now, your teacher might write this a little bit different. They might use a different letter, for example. But in a nutshell, this one over here is the effective. And then this one here is what we call the nominal. And that can be things like monthly, quarterly, and things like that. So in this question, we are trying to find the effective. So we'll say one plus, now this is the unknown. Then on the other side, we will fill in. So the nominal interest rate is 7.5%. So you might say 7.5%, I say 0 0.075, and then, because it's quarterly, that means I put a four at the bottom and then I put a four over here. Even though later on in the question, they're talking about three years and all of that, you don't say four times three over here. When you're using this formula, you just make sure these two numbers are the same. What I would then do is type all of this on my calculator so long. Or well, in fact, I'm not gonna type it on the calculator just yet because then I have to round off and all of that stuff, which I don't want to do. So I'd rather just leave it as it is. I then take this one over to the right hand side where it will become negative one. Then I can go type it all in. Now don't round off guys, you mustn't round off here. So what we'll find is that the I effective is equal to 0 0.07713 and then there's that whole number. Then to get the percentage, we just multiply that with 100. And so the final answer for this one will be 7.71%. Okay, I'm not sure why um, the answer that I found on the memo where I got this exam paper, maybe they were doing one decimal for that question. I'm not too sure, but it should be 7.71%. Now we're gonna move on to question two, which says that Bob deposits 10,000 Rand immediately. They tell us what the interest rate is. And then at the end of the first year, the interest rate changes again. And then six, six months later, the interest rate changes again, and he adds more money. So this is definitely something we will typically want to put on a timeline because it just helps us to visualize everything a lot better. I always like to do two timelines. The one is for my payments and the other one is for my interest rates. So we obviously start at T0 and we know that we're gonna end at T3. Okay, now we start off by Bob adds 10,000 Rand. So that's just gonna be 10,000 Rand going in over there. Now let's just look at the payments. It says that at the end of the first year and then it says six months later. Okay, so that means after 1.5 years. So that'll be at T1.5, which is quite weird, at 1.5 years, because it was at the end of the first year they were talking over there, and then they said six months later. So they mean six months later than that part. Um, he deposits 5,000 Rand. Okay, so we're gonna add in 5,000 Rand over there. Then in the timeline at the top, I like to do all my interest rates. So we are told that the interest rate for the first year is 7.5%, so up till T1, from T0 to T1, the interest rate was 7.5% quarterly, so I'll say 7.5% quarterly. The interest rate then changes to 7.8% monthly, but then it changes again after six months. So up to T1.5, so that's for six months over here, the interest rate is 7.8% monthly. So I'm gonna say 7.8% and that is monthly. And then it changes to 7% compounded monthly for the remainder up to T3. So then it's gonna be 7% monthly. Now the question says, 
how much is the investment worth at the end of the third year? So the way that I do these types of questions is the following. I look at the payments, so there's one and two. And I only look at one of them at a time, okay? So the way that that works is I completely ignore this one for now, and I'm gonna take this one, and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna work out how much will that one be worth after three years. So I'm gonna go all the way to three years. Some of you, I know you still like to do the old and the slow grade 10 method. I know that method makes more sense. You know, when you take this amount and then you compound it up to there and then you add 5,000 and then you compound it up to there. That takes really long. There are much faster ways. So I'm gonna completely ignore this one for now and I'm just gonna take this 10,000 and I'm gonna compound it all the way to the end making sure that I also keep track of all the different interest rates. So we know that this is all compounded, and so we can say um, A equals P one plus I N. That's the formula we're gonna use. Okay, so the total amount that this person's gonna have, so he starts with 10,000, and the first interest rate is this one over here, and that's gonna be, actually let me do this in a different color. So the first interest rate is just gonna be quarterly, so that's gonna be um, 0 0.075. Now you might say 7.5%, that's absolutely fine if you do it like that on your calculator, over four. And this one's only gonna be for one year, right? And so that's gonna be a four over here, because it's one times four. Then, I hope your teacher also explains it like this, but when the interest rate changes, you just open up another bracket. In fact, we're gonna have that a little bit smaller. So the next one is now this green monthly one. And so that's gonna be one plus uh, 0 0.078. Now when it's monthly, it's 12. Now that's only for six months. So we just put a six over there, because it's six months. Then if it was six years, you would say six times 12. So it's only six months. And then lastly, there's the blue interest rate. Now that one's also monthly, so I'll say 0 0.07 over 12, and that lasts for 1.5 years. And that's, so that's gonna be 18 months. You could say 1.5 times 12 if you wanted to. And so there we go. You could go ahead and you could work this all out. You could, all, you could also do it all in one calculation, but let's just go break it. I'm gonna calculate this so long by typing this on my calculator. Now, don't round off because it's not the final answer. So it's gonna be 12, four, three, four point and then I'm just gonna write all the decimals I have on my calculator. There we go. Now, we move on to the next payment. And so, we are done with this payment now. Now, we move on to this one, and what we do is we take it from where it is, and we drag it to the end. So if you notice that the only type of interest that that one is going to experience is only gonna be the 7%. It's not gonna experience the 7.8 and the 7.5 because it starts over here and then goes that way. And so we can use our normal formula. So it's gonna be 5,000. Now that one only experiences interest. Let me do it in blue. It only experiences the 0 0.07, or you can say 7%, and that's also gonna be for 18 months. And if you work this one out, don't round off. It's gonna be, let me actually write the answer down here. It's gonna be 5551. Five, 0.85912. And then of course, we're just gonna take these two answers and we're just gonna add them together. So we can say total. And then we just add, I'm gonna add those two numbers together. I'm not gonna write it down just to save space, but I'm adding them both together. And that gives us 17986.8. That was quite a good one. Thanks for watching, guys.